NVIDIA announces its most powerful AI chip yet. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. It's hard to overstate how unique NVIDIA's position in the AI industry is. It's rare, first of all, to have a company so singularly associated with a new technological revolution, particularly an infrastructure company like NVIDIA. But there's no denying that when people think of AI right now, the only company that might have some more mindshare or mental association is OpenAI because they were the ones who introduced ChatGPT, which got this whole party started. Still, when it comes to the world of mainstream finance and just the mainstream in general, NVIDIA is probably the company most associated with the generative AI transformation. It has, over the course of the last year, become the third most valuable public company, and frankly, it shows no signs of slowing down. This week, NVIDIA is holding its GTC conference. This is an event that used to just be for hardcore computer engineers and for NVIDIA customers, but now has taken on the trappings of a festival. Extending that analogy, the headline act yesterday was, of course, CEO Jensen Huang, whose announcement of NVIDIA's new GPU platform, Blackwell, did not disappoint. Zai Rahul sums up, NVIDIA just announced Blackwell, the most powerful GPU in the market. Main features, AI superchip, 208 billion transistors, second generation transformer engine, fifth generation NVLink, RAS engine, 100% in-system self-test, secure AI, full performance encryption, decompression engine, 800 gigabytes a second. That all sounds like Greek to you. Don't worry, because the upshot comes in the next line when Sai writes, analysts estimate this could potentially be 10 to 100x faster than NVIDIA's current Hopper A100 GPUs for very large transformer model workloads requiring multi-GPU scaling. This represents a monumental leap in scale for accelerating the trillion parameter AI future NVIDIA is targeting. In Jensen's presentation, he showed one chart in particular that just did a great job of showing the exponential growth of AI compute. The headline reads 1000x AI compute in eight years and goes back to 2016 when NVIDIA introduced Pascal at 19 teraflops. The next year, 2017, saw Volta with 130 teraflops. 2020, Ampere comes with 620. Hopper, the next great update, what we've been working on 2022 with 4,000 teraflops. And now Blackwell with 20,000 teraflops. CEO Jensen really summed it up very succinctly when he said in his keynote, Hopper is fantastic, but we need bigger GPUs. And if the compute capacity of Blackwell is a lot of the initial focus, NVIDIA is also clearly trying to tell a different story about its future. Writes CNBC, NVIDIA executives say the company is becoming less of a mercenary chip provider and more of a platform provider, on which other companies can build software. Said Jensen Huang, Blackwell's not a chip, it's the name of a platform. NVIDIA's enterprise VP Manavir Das extended this conversation. The sellable commercial product was the GPU, and the software was all to help people use the GPU in different ways. Of course, we still do that, but what's really changed is we have a new commercial software business now. The software that they introduced was called NIM, and the basic idea is to make it easier for people to deploy artificial intelligence applications. Again from CNBC, VP Das said NVIDIA's new software will make it easier to run programs on any of NVIDIA's GPUs, even older ones that might be better suited for deploying but not building AI. Said Das, if you're a developer, you've got an interesting model you want people to adopt. If you put it in a NIM, we'll make sure that it's runnable on all our GPUs so you reach a lot of people. Now, if you are interested in some of the more technical parts of the announcement, there's tons that you can go find on that. For example, in his presentation, Jensen explained how the Blackwell GPU is the first chip to combine two separately manufactured dyes into one chip. There were, of course, a lot of other announcements from this presentation as well. We're going to talk specifically about Omniverse, which is software that creates digital twins of real-world items and is slated to come to Apple's Vision Pro, as well as Project Groot, which is infrastructure for humanoid robots. First, though, I want to talk about the market reaction to this, because again, part of what has put NVIDIA at the center of the conversation is the fact that it has become the standard bearer for AI stock performance. On the one hand, as Bloomberg points out, the announcement of these new chips was widely anticipated, which, quote, made it hard for the presentation's details to impress investors, who sent the shares down about 1.6% in pre-market trading on Tuesday. Bloomberg gets at part of why that might be. They write, for all its success, NVIDIA revenue has become highly dependent on a handful of cloud computing giants, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and Meta. Those companies are pouring cash into data centers aiming to outdo their rivals with new AI-related services. The challenge for NVIDIA is broadening its technology to more customers. And that, of course, is where we get some of this additional focus on NVIDIA becoming a platform and its software business. And yet, if the immediate response of investors was not to send NVIDIA stock to the moon, there is still a sense of long-term strength. For example, 
Goldman Sachs raised their price target to 1000 saying, We came away from the keynote with renewed appreciation of NVIDIA's unique ability to innovate at data center scale, their large ecosystem and breadth of its customer and partner engagements, and ultimately compelling position as one of the key enablers and beneficiaries of the ongoing build-out of the generative AI infrastructure. Even more than just NVIDIA alone, this week we've been seeing the same back and forth that we had throughout last year, where macro wobbles compete with AI enthusiasm to reign supreme in terms of how Wall Street is thinking about the markets. Indeed, Reuters wrote a piece yesterday called, Wall Street Ends Higher, Investors Juggle Fed Nerves with AI Enthusiasm. Investors, they wrote, were torn between enthusiasm about the prospects for AI on the technology sector and worries about the Federal Reserve's policy update on Wednesday. Said Lindsay Bell, chief strategist at 248 Ventures, this is a market that really wants to hold on to the momentum trade, but what's weighing on investors' minds is what happens with the Fed this week. Let's talk briefly, though, about some of these other parts of the announcement. Jeremy Dalton, the head of immersive technologies at PwC, writes, NVIDIA just announced it is bringing its Omniverse platform to the Apple Vision Pro, allowing complex 3D assets to be streamed directly to the headset for further design, assisted by generative AI. By doing this, you don't need to worry about storage or be constrained by the device's processing power. VR filmmaker and YouTuber Hugh Howe writes, Omniverse shows the capabilities of spatial computing by blending 3D photoreal environments with the real world. Bilawal Sidhu is at the event and writes, I got to try this demo in person today. Mind blown. Immaculate streaming quality, full res CAD models with real-time ray tracing. Bilawal shared the same demo video, which for those of you listening to the podcast, involves modifying a car. And when someone asked you were able to go in the car and still see the room around you, Bilawal responded, yes, there's a mixed reality mode and it was surprisingly good. Perhaps even more exciting to many was something called Project Groot. Dr. Jim Fan, who I often quote on this show, writes, Today is the beginning of our moonshot to solve embodied AGI in the physical world. I'm so excited to announce Project Groot, our new initiative to create a general-purpose foundational model for humanoid robot learning. The Groot model will enable a robot to understand multimodal instructions such as language, video, and demonstration, and perform a variety of useful tasks. We're collaborating with many leading humanoid companies around the world so that Groot may transfer across embodiments and help the ecosystem thrive. Announced in Jensen's keynote, Project Groot is a cornerstone for the Foundation Agent Roadmap of the newly founded Gear Lab. At Gear, we are building generally capable agents that learn to act skillfully in many worlds virtual and real. Nate Barcy tried to sum up, Groot will enable a robot to understand multimodal instructions like language, video, and motion. Very soon we will see them cooking, preparing coffee, in supermarkets, changing tires, etc. So what makes something like Project Groot different than, for example, the Figure 01 robot that we've talked about recently, is that this is meant to be a system for many different robots, not just one humanoid robot that NVIDIA is building. So it's coming at the problem in a very different way, assuming a future in which there are many different types of humanoid robots. One additional note on Groot, NVIDIA also announced a dedicated chip called the Jetson Thor chip that's specifically designed for humanoid robots. Writes VentureBeat, to make sure humanoid robots can run complex multimodal models like Groot, NVIDIA has launched the Jetson Thor computing platform for humanoids. Based on the company's Thor SoC, the computer includes a high-performance CPU cluster, a next-generation GPU based on the NVIDIA Blackwell architecture, with a transformer engine delivering 800 teraflops of 8-bit floating-point AI performance. I think if you zoom out, one of the remarkable things about this really is just how unusual it is to have a hardware company like this, not even a consumer hardware company, but an infrastructure company, be so frankly hot and at the center of a transformational technology. It's a fascinating thing to watch and something that doesn't show any signs of slowing down. If and as there are more interesting announcements from GTC, I am sure we will be covering them, but for now, that is going to do it for the AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.